Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Joseph Mbele. Um, I teach at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. I'm uh, from Tanzania. Uh, I taught there at the University of Dar es Salaam from 1976 to 1991 and that um, I came to St. Olaf College in 1991. Welcome to my channel. I talk about um, culture, education, globalization. You can subscribe to this channel. There's a little button at the bottom. If you are using a laptop or a computer on the right um, of the screen, so today I would like to continue my conversations about uh, uh, the cultural dimensions um, of business. The topic specifically is culture and business between Africans and Americans. Um, I've been thinking about this topic for quite a while and um, I wrote a book uh, many years ago, um, Africans and Americans Embracing Cultural Differences. And in this book, I talk about all kinds of things. And uh, I've realized I did talk about um, things concerning business and how the cultural differences arise in the context of business between Africans and Americans. So in a way, I would like to just um, highlight uh, a few of those points. I think um, as time goes, I'll get deeper into this subject and actually write a paper or something like that. I've written a small article, very small article, published in a forum called uh, Medium, it's an online forum, and uh, you can Google the term um, culture, or rather the phrase culture and business between Africans and Americans. Uh, you'll be able to read that article. So the fundamental premise is this. Um, any kind of interaction any relationship uh, between people of different cultures immediately and inescapably involves a cultural dimension. Uh, whether it's diplomacy or research or marriage or business, between people of different cultures, uh, this involves the cultural dimension and people have to actually study uh, the differences in the cultures otherwise there will be obstacles there will be problems there will be a lot of challenges second thing is in the context of business we tend to think about business or trade for example as movement of commodities, um, money, we talk about volumes of trade, we talk about the type of imports or exports that um, um, we can see. Uh, we talk about all kinds of things. We talked about, we talk about trade balance or trade imbalance but um, we really should be talking about the people who are involved uh, business is not conducted among robots and the goods don't actually make the decisions to travel from one place to another or to be you know in some place rather than some other place uh, it's human beings who make the decisions, human beings who make everything happen, and therefore 
we have to understand the human beings and the human beings themselves need to understand one another. You are an African, you are doing business with Americans, uh, you need to understand the Americans, their values, their way of life, their expectations, their sensibilities. And uh, that's the same also for Americans. They need to understand the Africans. That way business can be conducted in a very smooth, you know, conducive environment. And the relationship that we are talking about, business is or should be conceptualized as a relationship between human beings. So in the book, I have uh, sections uh, such as conversation, communication. And what I mean is how do Africans talk? How do they communicate? the strategies, the modalities of communication in African culture. They are not necessarily the same as they are in the American culture. There are things like um, indirection, indirection. Uh, there are moments when Africans don't say things directly. And then for various reasons, and then you come to the African, uh, to the American side, you know, there are different ways of talking, different expectations. So when the two people meet, there could be problems, misunderstandings, because of the way they communicate. And um, it can cause real problems. So I want to explore that, how communication and business you know, um, work together or should work together. There's another section, for example, which I title Time Flies, but not in Africa. So how do people conceptualize time? How do Africans deal with time? How do they see, how do they view time? Uh, the same question you should ask, you know, about Americans. And it has to do with things like um, schedules. When you set a schedule, what does it mean to Americans? What does it mean to Africans? Concepts like punctuality. How does it work? Or does it work at all in Africa? How does it work in America? This could cause real problems when people are doing business. They need to work out uh, some compromises or at least to understand where they differ and why. So things like deadlines, you know, what do deadlines mean to Americans? What do deadlines mean to Africans? They need to work this out. They need to sort this out in order to eliminate false expectations and surprises. I have another section, you know, about work and the workplace. So the African work habits, the African work culture, whether it's in an office, in a factory, how do they operate? Um, uh, how do they view, you know, the relationships with other workers and the relationships with the boss? Um, uh, there are concepts of hierarchy, for example. Uh, how do age and gender differences play, you know, in the workplace? Um, how do the superiors deal with them? you know, subordinates and vice versa. It's very different in the American context. It's very different in the African concept context. We are now dealing with um, new technologies of communication. You know, uh, people communicate by email, you know, they Skype, they do Zoom meetings, 
but still these issues of communication time uh, work habits uh, play a part um, there's another thing uh, money talks there's a chapter here money talks and that's one of my favorite uh, chapters uh, what is money to the Africans and what is money to the Americans uh, do we have the same attitudes values you know around money in the book I make it very clear that there are differences there there are very serious differences. How do we spend money? How do we value money? Um, business involves money. There are payments, there are receipts, there are things like that. And um, if people don't understand the differences in terms of how they handle money, how they view money, how they uh, look at money. Um, when I say look at how they conceptualize money, what is money? Uh, it has caused a lot of problems in relationships. Um, borrowing and paying. Um, I write in the book about how Africans handle creditors. Uh, you know, when people borrow money, uh, what's the relationship between them and the creditor? Do they pay on time? Do they pay at once? Do they negotiate? You know, are they flexible in terms of when a, a loan is repaid? There are very serious differences here. There is more flexibility on the African side and more strictness on the American side. So people need to work out these kinds of things. And as I said, uh, I do want to focus on these topics and um, write some paper to clarify the things I say in the book. I have already mentioned you know, uh, many of these things. Uh, in the book, but contextualized them uh, differently. I would like now, in the context of writing about culture and business, I want to write more, and um, I hope in the process um, I will uh, create another video. Who knows? Um, it's my favorite uh, space right now. And so, um, Keep your eyes open, uh, keep visiting this site, uh, I, have a, I have a YouTube channel and um, I will also write um, and you will be able to read what I write. So for now, I just wanted to say briefly the kind of thoughts I have about uh, this topic of culture and business.